Eight people are dead. Two others seriously injured. In March of 2019, four migrants were in a pickup truck while it sped away, rolled over, and they were dead. In February of 2022, a boat capsized with migrants on board. Four more dead, and another one seriously injured. Human smuggling is not a victimless crime. And we are here today to announce the indictment against six members of a transnational human smuggling organization responsible for the deaths of at least eight migrants and serious injuries to at least two others. You know, many migrants come to the United States in hopes of a better life and to live, as I have, the American dream. But when they do so through human smuggling, they place their lives in the hands of individuals motivated by only one thing, profit, not them. The arrests that I'm announcing here today come as part of Operation Justice for All, a multi-year investigation into a human smuggling ring operating throughout South Texas. I am the United States Attorney for the Southern District of Texas. My name is Alamdar Hamdani. I thank you for being here. My office has partnered with many agencies, and they're all here today. Let me tell you who they are. First of all, Homeland Security Investigations, Border Patrol, Customs and Border Protection, Coast Guard, as well as, and I want to tell you who they are first, Craig Larrabee is the acting special agent in charge of Homeland Security Investigations. Joel Martinez is a deputy chief patrol agent of Border Patrol. Captain Michael Cintron is a deputy sector commander of U.S. Coast Guard. And Andy Blanco is the director of Customs and Border Protection and Air and Marine Operations. I also want to recognize behind him David Mays, chief of Fort Mansfield Police Department. Next to him, Aaron Phillips, sergeant of South Padre uh, Police Department. Next to him is Ramon Salinas, Ray Salinas, Sheriff of Kennedy County Sheriff's Office. And next to him is Ed Rodriguez, an assistant United States attorney in this office. And the AUSA uh, in charge of this case. Next to him is Modesto Salveda, an investigator with Duval County Sheriff's Office. And next to him is Annette Hinojosa, the district attorney at Wallace County District Attorney's Office, uh, Willis County District Attorney's Office. And finally, Next to her is Warden Michael Gonzalez of the Texas Game Warden. The reason I wanted to take the time to introduce each and every one of them because an investigation like this requires coordination from the local to the state to the federal. And what it does is it takes all of this effort to, in, in, if you want to dismantle the transnational human smuggling organizations that in this case, have led to the death of at least eight people and two and, and seriously injured two others. Now, arrested this week is Juan Tena, who we believe is a person who was running this organization. Alexis Ardorno, Ardorno one of his um, scouts. Julia Torres, her son Jose Torres, and her brother Israel Torres Jr., who are also working as scouts for Mr. Tena, and Erasmo Garcia III, also working as a scout uh, for Mr. Tena. All have already, already made initial appearances to date. By the way, detention hearings are set in this case uh, for February 7th at 1.30 for most of the individuals. Now, I want to tell you a little bit about the indictment. You all should have a copy of it. The indict indictment charges two separate deadly smuggling incidents. I talked about them already. March of 2019, Juan Tena is charged with coordinating a failed human smuggling attempt. During this event, Tena allegedly recruited four others, Julia Torres, her son Jose Torres, her brother Israel Torres Jr., 
and Erasmo Garcia III to act as scouts escorting, escorting a vehicle loaded with migrants from the Rio Grande Valley to Houston. The load vehicle fled from sheriff's deputies and as I said earlier, rolled over. Four migrants were killed, now at least one was seriously injured, according to the church. The other part of the indictment deals with the events of February of 2022. The second event charges Fontana with coordinating a second failed human smuggling event attempt. The indictment alleges that during this event, Alexis Adorno acted as a scout escorting a vehicle loaded with migrants to South Padre Island where the migrants then boarded a boat. Afterwards, the migrants were supposed to be dropped off to another area, but the boat capsized. And as I mentioned, four migrants died and one was seriously injured, at least. These two event events occurred years apart and in jurisdictions throughout South Texas. It tells you about the scope of the human smuggling problem in this part of the country. This week's arrest would not have been possible without the dedicated efforts of each and every one of the law enforcement partners here. Cooperation and coordination is key to making these investigations happen and to finding those responsible. And just as just to give you some more insight into the indictment, um, they've been charged with conspiracy to transport illegal aliens within the United States, resulting in death. That is up to life in prison. They've also been charged with transporting illegal, illegal aliens within the United States, resulting in death. That is also up to life in prison. And then there are counts of transporting illegal aliens within the United States, resulting in bo serious bodily injury. That's up to 20 years in prison. Let me reiterate one thing on all of this. The problem we're facing when it comes to human smuggling is humans. Humans are dying. Humans are perishing. And those who want to come to the United States must know that there is a price to pay when you deal with human smugglers. With that, I turn it over to my partners at HSC. Thank you, United States Attorney Mondani, for shedding light on this very dangerous crime that continues to cost lives among many along the southwest border. <coughs> I'm acting Special Agent in charge, charge Craig Larrabee with Homeland Security Investigations here in Texas. As the lead federal law enforcement investigative agency responsible for investigating this loss of life from this failed uh, human smuggling attempt. During the evening of February 17, 2022, Officers from the Fort Mann State Police Department discovered a deceased person within a local waterway. The person was later determined to be an undocumented migrant. Over the course of the next 48 hours, a capsized John boat was discovered and three survivors were returned. After interviews, these three individuals were also determined to be undocumented migrants from several Latin American countries. In the Rio Grande Valley, teams of HSI special agents are responsible for a multitude of investigative disciplines including human smuggling, while actively partnering with a network of federal, state, and local law enforcement agencies. Together, the Southwest Regional Coordinating Mechanism identifies potential maritime smuggling events along the Gulf of Mexico and the Pacific intercoastal uh, waterways, and is dedicated to identifying and disrupting those attempting to exploit these pathways for illegal activity. In investigating the events of February 2022, HSI, in coordination with our U.S. Border Patrol Rio Grande Valley partners, identified the criminal organization responsible for smuggling attempts and discovered a criminal connection with another human smuggling event. Sadly, this particular smuggling event also resulted in the death of four migrants and caused injuries to six others in motor vehicle accidents. This investigation clearly just demonstrates how HSI, working with our federal, state, and local partners, was able to successfully tie together events in the vast region along the southwest border and reveal the organization, its structure, and the breadth of its illicit activity. HSI and its partners present here, present here today work closely with the United States Attorney's Office to bring justice to the deceased, the injured, their families, and hold those responsible accountable for this crime. In 
closing, I'd like to warn anyone who is considering having a loved one smuggled into the United States. If you enter into an agreement with a criminal organization, your loved ones will not be treated with respect nor care. They will simply be seen as a commodity and will be placed in grave danger. Good morning. My name is William Martinez. I'm the Deputy Chief of the Rio Grande Valley Sector of the U.S. Border Patrol. My area ranges from uh, Falcon Lake on the west side all the way to the mouth of the river on the east side, uh, mouth of the Rio Grande River, all the way up to the Louisiana, eastern, uh, the Texas border, I should say. Um, it's my honor to represent the men and women of the United States Border Patrol here in the Valley. Uh, as we highlight this special case, you know, in my 30 year career with Border Patrol, it never ceases to amaze me the cruelty and, 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 and the just blatant disregard disregard for life that these smugglers show these days, uh, these uh, migrants. Uh, they do treat them as a commodity and not as a human being that they are. And that's where this, this team comes in comes in to, to do their, their job. This case is a testimony of our partnership at the local, state, and federal level. And we are collective, and we work collectively to secure the RGV border area because we are determined that war security is national security, and we will stop at nothing to protect our people and those that uh, that the migrants look to uh, take advantage of. Uh, rest assured that regardless of the flow that we're seeing in migrant uh, populations, we depend on our partners to help us secure the border and secure the nation, and that's why we, these these uh, relationships are so important to us.